This is uh, Amin Cycle, Director of the Center for Arab and Islamic Studies at the Australian National University. I am uh, with His Excellency uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Saba, uh, the former Deputy Prime Minister and uh, 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 Foreign uh, Minister of the State of Kuwait. Um, uh, Dr. Al Saba is visiting the Australian National University at the invitation of the University Centre for Arab and Islamic Studies uh, and under the sponsorship of the uh, Australia Arab uh, or Council of Australia Arab uh, Relations. And uh, we are uh, absolutely delighted to have him uh, with us. Uh, Dr. Al Saba, welcome to the ANU Media. Thank you. Um, I would like to really start off by asking you that the Middle East is going through a very uh, difficult uh, phase in its uh, overall uh, evolution. Um, we've got uh, so many uh, conflicts going on uh, in the region. What do you think are the main causes of uh, this uh, turbulent uh, period? Well, uh, you cannot really ascribe one singular uh, cause. It's a cumulative. There are numerous uh, issues that have accumulated over the years that, produ that has produced uh, such a, a turbulent uh, period. But I can, I can say with confidence that the, one of the main uh, intrinsic causes is the, uh, is the Arab-Palestinian, uh, the, the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict that has produced such a, a hardship for the past 60 years, numerous wars w took place in the Arab world. Uh, and for six, 60 years, Israel did not gain uh, security. And no single Palestinian got uh, justice. So it's about time that we should concentrate our effort to solve this fundamental uh, thorny issue. Um. Uh, Dr. al Sabo, do you think that we are witnessing the emergence of a new order in the Middle East, which could really result in the redrawing of some of the boundaries? And uh, uh, I think many people would argue, or many analysts would argue, that it's very difficult now to put, uh, for example, Iraq and Syria uh, back together, and for that matter also Libya, and some people would say the same thing about uh, Yemen. Well, we have this uh, phenomenon of failed states, uh, where you... Uh, the uh, the non-state actors have gained enormous power and um, and frankly the international community has relinqu relinquished its uh, its role in uh, in safeguarding the regional uh, security uh, and stability uh, p uh, paramount uh, the uh, the issues at hand is not really the borders it's the viability of states whether they can survive and um, at currently we have civil wars in libya in yemen in syria and in a in, in lesser lesser extent in iraq mm -hmm. but uh, how the international community will handle the outcome of this civil war will determine very much about whether these states are going to be a viable states or not uh, do you think that one of the reasons that we really have these conflicts is because, for example, uh, power like the United States, which once had the Pax Americana in the region, has relinquished its res responsibilities over many years. And many uh, analysts, again, would argue that the American role has really declined in the region and that has generated a major vacuum which could be really filled uh, not only by uh, states who are uh, in conflict with one another, but also sub-national groups which have really emerged, uh, particularly uh, in in the last uh, uh, many years, uh, you are absolutely right. I mean, th there is, there has been some uh, lack of. Uh, it's not only American, uh, but the whole United Nations system mm -hmm. has proved to be uh, wanting mm -hmm. in be engaging in addressing and resolving some of the regional issues. Um, 
that uh, also brings me to the question of the Gulf Cooperation Council, in which you played a very important role in consolidating the Gulf Cooperation Council. And uh, of course, for the um, information of our audience, uh, uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council is composed of uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, and uh, the United Arab Emirates and Sultanate of uh, Oman. Um, to what extent do you think that the Gulf Cooperation Council has been effective uh, to bringing uh, or contributing to peace? and stability in the region? Well, actually, the, uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC, remains the only viable, coherent regional organization that has withstood all the turbulences in the past oh, 30 years. Uh, we uh, at the GCC have assumed uh, a responsibility to... Um, not only to safeguard our uh, security for the six countries, but also to try to resolve some of the uh, issues beyond our uh, our region. We have been quite involved as a as a unit in providing uh, financial and economic assistance to countries around the world. Uh, we act in a harmonious way with international organizations, be it in the refugee issues or in the humanitarian and uh, uh, international economic uh, conferences. Uh, but also we have been quite active uh, in uh, the, um, in consolidate or trying to resolve the inter-Arab conflicts. Mm. Uh, mm. So I think that the experience of the GCC have proven to be a very successful one. Uh, what do you think are the chances of uh, expanding the GCC to include the countries like Iraq and Iran? Well, the, the, the idea of the GCC is really to, of six countries that have very much, uh, they are very similar. Mm. And uh, the, um, we envisage ourselves as a unit within the broader Arab world uh, not separate uh, and not uh, distinguished from the Arab League. So we are part and parcel of the Arab world, of the Arab League. Um, with respect to, uh, of course, Iran is not uh, an Arab country, mm. but we think that, yes, there ought to be some security structure mm. for countries who are bordering the uh, Arabian Gulf. Mm. Uh, and this is something that has been called for by a United Nations resolution that ended the Iraq-Iran war. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, yes, we aspire to have such a GCC and the other two countries that are overlooking the Arabian Gulf, Iraq and Iran, mm -hmm. in a, some sort of a security structure that maintain uh, regional stability. So the GCC plus two is something which is under consideration? Uh, this has always been uh, something that we have always talked about. And also, as, uh, as a matter of fact, it has been called for by the Security Council resolution that ended the Iraq-Iran war. I think one of the issues that really is concerning the outside world is the new fault line, which is really developed uh, uh, in the Gulf. Uh, especially. I mean, the northern uh, part of the Gulf has gone very much under the influence of uh, Iran, uh, Russia, and some of their allies, including Hezbollah and Lebanon and so on, which I think is also a major source of concern for the Arab countries in the region. And the southern part is uh, very much under the sway of uh, uh, the GCC, and more importantly, Saudi Arabia and its international allies. This is a new fault line, which is added on a number of other fault lines in the, uh, in the region, that is the geopolitical, security, and fault lines and so on. How do you think this issue can be really addressed? I mean, to, to build really bridges between the north and the south and make sure that the Persian Gulf is a, 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 is, is a region uh, uh, very much operating on the basis of a wider cooperation between uh, all the states? Well, I, I tend to a little bit disagree uh, on uh, this characterization of uh, fault lines. Mm -hmm. uh, I um, I can say with uh, with with uh, pretty much a confidence that um, we within the Arab world uh, have a, 
uh, voiced our concern about uh, foreign interference in our internal affairs, uh, be it from international powers or regional uh, actors. And in that sense, I think that uh, the, uh, the upcoming now uh, Arab uh, League summit that's going to take place in Jordan, I think certain issues uh, are being currently discussed and to, to be addressed at this uh, the Arab summit. And one of the principal one is the Arab uh, national security structure to protect the Arab world from foreign interference. So I take it that you will also be very willing to enter dialogue uh, with uh, Russia, with uh, Iran and uh, some of their uh, regional allies uh, in order to uh, build really bridges right across the Absolutely. sort of divide that's coming. Absolutely. I mean, uh, this is, we, we, we firmly believe in dialogue. But, uh, as a matter of fact, we have extended uh, an invitation to our uh, friends in, uh, in Iran, Tehran, to enter into a constructive uh, and serious uh, uh, dialogue between the GCC and Iran uh, based on the principles of uh, the golden rule, as I call it, of international relations and the non-interference in the internal affairs and the uh, respect of sovereignty uh, of, of nations. Uh, and we hope that we can enter into a dialogue with Iran, uh, GCC Iran, uh, to, uh, to safeguard uh, our regional stability. Uh, we are just about to run out of time, but I just want to ask you uh, one last question, and that is that the advent of the Arab Spring, uh, or the so-called Arab Spring, generated a lot of optimism about the emergence of political pluralism within the Arab world. Uh, but uh, now we see that uh, Tunisia is one of the countries which is pretty much on a shaky uh, road of uh, democratic development. Uh, but uh, same, uh, the expectations of the people who uh, instigated the Arab Spring have not been really fully, uh, have not been fulfilled to the extent which sh should have been. Uh, the, what do you think has gone wrong there? Well, I think that the Arab world is, has been gone through a period of uh, uh, despair. Uh, people have been denied their basic human rights, uh, denied their, uh, their role as citizens uh, to partake in determining their own future. Mm. Um, that led to an eruption, but it's an unguided er eruption. Mm. I don't think one can claim that the so-called Arab Spring has failed. I think it has been misdirected. I think that the initial cause is still viable, it's still there. Uh, and that is the yearning for justice, for freedom, for more participatory political uh, system, more uh, politics of inclusion. It becomes now the standard uh, stickyard that we gauge uh, ourselves uh, against. So in that sense, I think I'm very optimistic uh, that the, uh, the initial uh, movement to regain respect uh, to the Arab citizens are still there. Yes, some of these, um, some of these countries are going through very difficult times, uh, but I am uh, confident that at the end uh, the Arab world is, is going to emerge much stronger. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Many thank thanks.